Welcome to the Geek and I podcast. My name is John. Glad you can join us this week. Good afternoon, Jeffrey. How are you, sir? Hey, guys. How's it going, man? So this week, we have a special guest. Would you uh, would you like to introduce... Oh, yes. Man, check this out. This dude's really killer. When people hear his name, people think about Kung Fu Fighting. Not the song, the actual Kung Fu Fighting. Let's welcome to the show our new guest, Harry Mock. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Thanks for being with us today. Appreciate My your time, pleasure. sir. My pleasure. So uh, w- let's uh, let's kick things off with um, a quick little rundown of the resume. And you know, I'm I like to troll uh, IMDb, and one of the first things that pops up on IMDb is is from one of my favorite movies possibly of all time. And I think you know where I'm going um, it, from Rambo first blood part two. There you have it. Now, uh, how, how did you get involved with that? Were you just a, you know, just a stunt man in the industry at the time? Cause I know it also says you're a writer, producer, director, um, actor, and stunt man. So w- w- was that um, specifically part of your stunt man years? Yeah, you know, interesting story how that all came about, you know, and it uh, basically throughout the years, you know, I I ended up becoming an award-winning director, award-winning producer, award-winning writer, and award-winning actor. And so what has happened is regarding Ramble 2, um, I was, uh, the year prior, I had worked on Uncommon Valor with Gene Hackman, and... uh, and that's the year that I had met Eric Lee, you know, the king of kata. And uh, I've known Eric. I've seen him on all the magazines and everything. And and for some reason, we just we hit it off. We just hit it off, and you know, and we that that following year, '84, uh, he had asked me. He said, "Hey, you you want to go to Mexico City with me? I have a seminar I need to do there." And I said, "Well, God, I've never been to Mexico before. Yeah, yeah, let's go." So we we flew out to Mexico City, landed, got a hotel room, <laughs> and then he realized that he came a week early. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're like, well, Eric, well, I, hey, we just hang out. He, and he goes, well, hey, wait a minute, Ramble Two is being filmed in Acapulco right now. Let's fly over there and hustle a job. I said, yeah, let's do that. Probably a lot of the same stunt guys from Uncommon Valor the year prior. So sure enough, we got out there and got out to the set, you know, and it was quite a journey, by the way. And uh, we met the stunt coordinator, and the stunt coordinator had told us, he goes, yeah, you guys are, hey, that's, I could use you guys, you know, to play the Viet Cong soldiers, right? And, and being stunt guys, he goes, yeah, I could definitely use you, use you guys. But what happened was uh, several days ago, there was a storm that came through and blew down the sets and everything, and, and they're rebuilding them right now. So if you could just hang around, you know, and, and wait until they get things back up. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you right on. And so uh, Eric says, well, why don't you stay here? I'll go back to Mexico City, do my seminar, and I'll come back. I said, sure. So they set us up at the Acapulco Plaza Hotel, which was back then a five-star rest, a five-star hotel. And uh, I, I was only paying $23 a night. I was like, yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> so... Uh, so we, I, I just hung out, you know, and, and meeting people, met the producers and the director, George Cosmatos. And, um, and then I remember one day I, I just happened to have my, some of my photos with me and I heard that they were editing at the hotel. So I, I went upstairs and I, I found the editor and the editor was Richard Halsey, who won the Academy Award for editing Rocky one. So I was, I was like, Hey, how are you? You know? And. And uh, he goes, hey, what are you doing, working on the show? And I said, oh, no, I'm trying to get on the show. And I showed him my photos and everything. And he was, like, so blown away that he said, hey, he goes, why don't you show these to Sly? He'll hire you right on the spot. I know he will. And I said, well, you know, I I mean, how do you get to him? Because he had three, four bodyguards around him all the time, you know. (laughs) 
and um, and and plus, you know, I was just waiting around, waiting for them to build things back up again. And and he says, well, hey, listen, I'm, I got to go down and see him. Why don't you come catch a ride with me on a, in a cab, and we'll go down and and I'll introduce you to Sly. And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> and uh, so we went down to the uh, set because they were film, filming interiors, okay? So we went down to the set where they're filming interiors, and he says, wait right here, and I'll I'll, 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 I'll I'll call for you. So I'm hanging out, you know, and then I'm at the where they're filming interiors, and then out comes the door, George Cosmatos, you know? And he goes, hey, he goes, how are you? And I said, oh, good, good. And I, was, I start showing him some of my photos, and he goes, wow, these are great, you know? And then the stunt coordinator came up, and 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 George says to um, the stunt coordinator, he says, "Hey, he goes, look at this, man. This is, these are pretty, really nice." He goes, "Could you use anything like this in this film?" And and he says, "Well, you know, I mean, the move, film moves really fast." He goes, I, "I don't know if we could set up some of these things, you know, but but I definitely want to use you, you know. And I, I'm not sure when they're going to be done with building the sets and all finished, putting the sets back up." And he says, he goes, you know, I, I don't want you to just hang around here for nothing. You know, I mean, you, why don't you why don't you leave your information back at the production office and and head back home. And then and when we're ready, I'll fly you back out. And at that point, I all I could say is, I, I OK, all, all right, sure. And I'm thinking to myself, well, gosh, that ain't going to happen. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. So you know, an hour had gone by and I was. Uh, I thought, well, shoot, maybe I should just, I hadn't seen Richard, and I thought, well, maybe I should head back and just do that, you know, leave my information there. So as I started to head out to catch a cab, I hear someone call my name, and I turn around, and I see it's Richard, and he says, come here, come here. So I go over there, you know, and he knocks on the motor, Sly was in a big motor home, he knocks on the door, Sly opens up the door, and he's, Richard says, this is the guy I was telling you about. And Sly looks at me, and he says, yeah, come on, come on in. You know, so I go into his motorhome, and I kid, I kid you not, I wasn't in there for no more than a few minutes, and he was looking at my photos, and he says, I want to use you. I want you to double some kicks for me. And I was like, sure, no problem. And so we were hanging out, talking about everything and anything, and mutual friends and stuff, and, and he really, you know, it was, a, it was so cool because here I am in my 20s, sitting right across from Stallone, like, you know, two, three feet across from Stallone, just him and I sitting in this motorhome chatting away. And, and I was like, wow, how is, cool is this? And then he goes to tell me about, you know, certain people that, were, that we knew and everything. And, and he says, he goes on and he says, he goes, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm working on Rocky One. And I'm in the ring and we're doing our fighting and everything. And the coordinator, uh, is telling me, no, you can't do that. You, you, that's not how it's done. And Sly says, bullshit, this, this, is, this is how I'm going to do it. He goes, yeah, but that's not how they do it. He goes, well, it's how I'm going to do it. And so he goes on to say, he goes, I hate people that think they know everything, you know. And then he goes on to say, he says, he says, always remember this. He goes, do what you feel because what you feel comes from your heart. And if anybody else ever tells you any different, you tell them to go, F themselves and you tell them, I told you so. And I was like, I'm sitting there like, it was like words from God coming down. Right. <laughs> so what, was, what is it, what does it mean awesome. um, when, when you say double some kicks? What is that? What double does that kicks. mean? That, that means he, they were going to dress me up with long hair and, and the same getup as Stallone, Right as Rambo and then I would be throwing kicks and they would you know they won't catch me face on you know but they'd catch me from the back and everything because my physique was still built I had a good physique uh, enough to match his physique mm -hmm. so so uh yeah so I'd be doing some crazy kicks and stuff you know and uh, and baby basically double double Stallone let me ask you this Harry when you're hanging out with Stallone, did he give you a piece of advice that you still cling on today about? That's one thing that's helped your person spiritually, emotionally, and actually career-wise. That that what he what he told me: believe, do what you feel, because what you feel comes from your heart. 
And if anybody ever tells you any different, you tell them to go, mm, and you tell them, I told you so. That I used throughout my career. Nice. Uh, looking, looking at the um, at your IMDb again, um, I notice on here that it is under producer. Mm-hmm. It has animal crackers. Is that the is that the animal crackers that that everybody is raving about on Netflix? Absolutely. How do you how do you get involved? How do you get involved in that? Well, that, here, well here's another uh, uh, wonderful story. Um, back in the early '90s, I used to produce at Atari Games, and and one of my buddies who was doing a game that I was actually in his game that he was producing was Scott Saba, who I met at Atari, and so we became, you know, we became great friends, and um, I helped him on his game, and I became one of the characters in his game, and I was producing a game, and. Um, he, he ended up um, leaving Atari and moved to Los Angeles to start getting into animation. And so we, so we stayed friends. And, I, and as he went to Hollywood, because I already had experience there, I was helping to mentor him in that sense to learn more about you know, filmmaking and, and how Hollywood works, so on and so forth. And um, we... We, we stayed friends all these years, right? So one year, there was a year when I was, uh, I was producing for No Limit Films. I was producing and directing for Master P, his music videos, right? And so we would, he, he, Master P loved the work that we did for him. And then he wanted to do a Master P doll. So I ended up setting that up and having Master P dolls made out of China sent to the U.S., and they said, hey, we, I need a commercial for this. So I thought, well, how cool would it be to do an animated commercial, right, with the Master P doll? And so uh, first person I called was Scott Sava. And I said, Scott, I said, man, I, I need to make an a, a animated commercial, you know, for this Master P doll, 30 seconds. And, and I ha- I'm very specific with the budget, what I had to do it with. And he says, well, you know, Harry, uh, uh, in Hollywood standards today, back then, right, in, in, the, in the later 90s, Scott says, you know, uh, animation costs $10,000 a second. And I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't have that $10,000 a second. That's 300 grand. I don't have 300 grand in my budget to do this commercial. What I have is I, I had like about, what was it about, about 25 grand that I could pay him. And Scott was like, you know, he says, I can make that happen. I said, really? He says, yeah, because what I've been doing these so past several years is online. And this is in the nineties, mind you, I've been approached by people around the globe from third world third world countries asking me to teach them how to do animation, you know, how to model, how to shape, how to animate, you know. And so Scott, out of the literally out of the kindness of his heart, he was teaching these people how to do all this stuff. And they ended up becoming actually really good. And he says, I can make this happen because I could have this guy in a, this third world country who I taught how to model, who became really good, I just pay him a couple hundred bucks and he's happy because a couple hundred bucks to him is like, you know, a couple grand or more, you know, mm-hmm. and from a third world country, right? Maybe even more than that. So what Scott did was he started having all these guys build these elements for me and then he would take it and he would do the finishing touches and animate animate them and everything so I, we actually was able to do this 30 second commercial and i think i think the but total budget on it was might have been like about about 40 50 grand somewhere but anyhow um uh what uh, something that was really cool that happened and I'm glad I was able to make it happen for Scott 
was that during that time, um, he had gotten uh, laid off from another project, you know, and we're talking, here we are, right, we're right up against Christmas, right? And they were, they, unfortunately, you know, he was having a really rough time at the, during that time, and he couldn't, you know, I mean, they were so tight on money, they weren't even able to buy their kids' presents, you know, um, and so I told my partner, I said, listen, I know Scott, he says he could get this done, he's going to get it done. Let me, I, I'd like to just pay him up everything up front, everything. And my business partner told me, he says, dude, he goes, hey, I trust you. If you trust him, it's up to you. Do it. So I was able to hand Scott a check right before Christmas for 25 grand. And that just made everything happen for him. And, and, and that's why we've been friends all these years. You know, he's, we, we stayed friends all these years. But move as we move forward, right? As we move forward, I was doing a project. I partnered with Jeff Clanagan, who was the founder of Code Black Entertainment. And I've known Jeff for decades. And he partnered with Lionsgate. And when he partnered with Lionsgate, he said, man, I remember that script you wrote called Hoop Fighter. And it was a it was a sci-fi futuristic show which I combined full contact martial arts with basketball and literally made it work. Okay, and that was the game I was producing at Atari, which I never got to finish because all kinds of stuff happened. The whole regime changed. Time Warner came was there. A lot of things changed. So I ended up going, and but I took my concept with me, and so. Uh, I told Jeff, yeah, I'd love to partner with you. He goes, well, before let's let's do something to build, you know, build on this so that way we have something to pitch. So I said, okay, well, um, we could do uh, six animated shorts, a 100-page comic book, uh, um, a, a novel, and an iPhone and iPad game app. And he says, he says, oh, yeah, that's what we, that's what we would need. And I, and, and I, I said, what, what kind of budget can, he, can you give me? He says, well, he goes, um, the best, I could probably do about 110 grand. But in my mind, I'm thinking, God, this is going to be another $300,000 project, you know, <laughs> to do all that. And, and so I called Scott up, right? I knew Scott could make something happen. Mm -hmm. So I said, Scott, hey, listen, I got 110 grand. Can we do this? And he says, yeah, I'll make it work. I can make anything work. <laughs> You're my man. So when we did the six animated shorts, the animation came out so well that Scott said, you know what? I, I think I want to take one of my children's books because he, prior to his, him having twins, right, he started um, writing children's book and he wrote like nearly 20 of them for his, and he did it basically for his children when they were old enough to read. So he says, you know what, I'd like to take one of my children's books and turn it into an animated feature. And I told Scott, I said, hey, Scott, if you do that, let me know. I'll help you raise the money. And so that's exactly what I did. I helped him raise the money and ended up becoming one of the producers on the show. So that's how, and, and if it wasn't for me, that show would never, movie would have never got done. And how does that, how does that translate into to Emily Blunt and John Krasinski? Ah, ha, 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 ha. you're going to like this one. Well, our, uh, our partner, our, our, one of our, our co-producers as well, Jamie Thomason, he's a voice director and one of the top voice directors. And he did casting for Disney for 15 years. And he's a good friend of Scott's. So Scott brought him on. He goes, hey, I want you to work with us on this film. you know. And I know Jamie. Uh, through Scott. And so Jamie, what he did was, you know, when when you approach the agencies, the, the top three agencies, William Morris, right, ICM, all these big agencies, right, well, you, you approach, you normally approach them with big projects, you know, and you got money behind it and everything. And But here we are, right, here we are, we didn't have anything yet. We didn't even have the funding yet locked in yet. So we're thinking, but if we were able to get these some names behind us, it would even make it that much easier for us to get the funding. 
So what happened was, was Jamie, you know, because he's been doing casting for 15 years for Disney, what happens when he calls the major three? Hey, Jamie, how are you doing? Hey, what you got for us, right? Right? <laughs> Not like, well, you know, uh, well, how much money is behind it? Who's, what studio is behind the show? How much, what's the budget? Yada, yada, yada. Because if he would have told him, well, there's no studio behind it. There's no budget right now. I mean, he'd be like, well, come call us when you get this all together, you know? And, and that goes, I guess that goes back to um, Stallone's story from Rocky One. That's not how you do it. <laughs> exactly. Well, don't tell me. I, I, this is how I do it. So Exactly. exactly. So Jamie goes and gets the, the agency agency excited about this script right it's an animated feature right so so they read it and they it ended up sending us a from three agencies list of all these a-listers and we're like beside ourselves right we're like are you serious so we ended up we we start getting interest from all these different actors john krasinski danny devito stallone gilbert gottfried Harvey Firestein, Sir, Sir Ian McKellen, because they're all on this list. So we're picking them. And so in parallel, as this is happening, I'm actually raising the money. I'm getting, we're getting the commitments and everything. So now we're like looking really good. So what happens is, is now we've, we, we've raised the money where we've got the cast. Uh, we, we weren't using Emily Blunt at first. We were using uh, uh, Kaylee Coco from The Big Bang Theory, right? Mm -hmm. She committed or her agent committed. So so we're bringing the actors in to do their their parts for the film, right? So John had come in a few times already and so the uh, and and Kaylee was supposed to come in but she never showed up. And then we had her scheduled again, she never showed up. Then we had her scheduled again, she never showed up. And every time she doesn't show up, it costs us money, you mm -hmm. know, because we're renting the facility, right? And we're making the, we got to get her recorded. So, so that third, after that third time, John's in there and he says, Hey, when's Kaylee coming in? And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, when's, when's she coming in? And we're like, I, I, you know what, John, um, it looks like we, we might, we, you know, she, she may not be coming in, you know, uh, because we're having some issues right now. And then, and then we'd asked her, I, I mean, asked, um, um, but John, he said, well, John, um, because John had told us that his, his wife had already, he watched the, the trailer that we used to help raise the money. She loved it. So we asked John, we said, well, John, you, hey, you, you think Emily would be interested in playing your wife in, you know, in this film? And he goes, oh, my God, she would love to. She loves it. And he texted her right there. And I swear, within a matter of a few minutes, she texts back and said, I would love to do it. And that's how we got Emily Blunt. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so she was huge. Killer. Yeah. So I like, like I said, I mean, that just goes back to, you know, sometimes doing it a little differently, it all works out in the end. And there's always a plan. There's always somebody has a bigger plan and knows what what um what's gonna gonna, you know, end up happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the the Animal Crackers has been the number one animated feature of the year. And I think we're still number one, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's been viewed. God knows how many times, you know, and and I know uh, Scott had made all these gifts and everything and and for, you know, people to download it. And that was downloaded over one hundred and one million times. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so we're we're right now we're uh, I'm working on uh, doing some fundraising to do the to get the Part sequel two. going. We have a sequel, yes, we have a sequel going. Incredible story, great concept behind it. Um, and uh, if we could, you know, raise enough of the funds, we could bring in the same cast, and uh, it'll be absolutely incredible. And this time around, it'll be even that much better because. The first time around, we had Nabisco supporting us, but 
Netflix didn't want nothing to do with them. We're like, are you kidding me? They're willing to put up millions of dollars in advertising. That's crazy. I mean, you'd think Nabisco would be the one product that would, you know, be there for animal crackers altogether, you know? You know, you know, they were they they loved what we were doing and we actually helped Nabisco's animal crackers. A couple years back, if you remember, they had changed their their design of their box. Right. Yeah. And and if you remember that, that was because of us. And the reason why it was because of us is because we were trying to get PETA to support what we were doing. And they didn't, they said, well, we wouldn't support that because, you know, the animal crackers, because they have their animals in a cage. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're like, well, what if we're able to get them to change their marketing and redesign it to where they're out of the cage? If you do that, we would be with you guys 100%. Mm -hmm. That was you? 100%. <laughs> that's why they changed it wow wow yeah, so but but what happened was was that because they didn't want nabisco they didn't care if nabisco was involved we're like oh my god this is not good because they, they could have added literally millions in advertising for us so now with the sequel we've been in contact with nabisco nabisco said hey we will get behind this you know uh, this time around and uh we would we'll do everything differently now, what else? What else do you have on your on your ledger? Is stuff that's to, you know in the works? In the works right now, uh, other than uh, working on getting uh, the sequel together, getting the funding for the sequel, um, I'm involved with uh, some new technologies. Uh, where uh, I got involved with uh, um, the, in the business of manufacturing masks, and during a time where we really, really needed, because I know the outbreak is, has just jumped on us again. Uh, mm -hmm. But what we're doing with our mask, and I have one right here to show you. We have a very, very unique mask. I'm going to put it on for you. And what makes this mask unique is that we're, we're, we have a, a coating. A... Special coating that we're using on this that's patented coating that will kill the 91 percent of the virus on contact and the rest of the virus if there's any left will be killed will be killed minutes later not only that this mask also blocks out the virus by 99 percent so this is like an n99 mask mm -hmm. along with a um uh, um a, ver a very special coating uh that will eliminate the virus as well well, I noticed the shape of it also is mm -hmm. a little different yeah. to to um, a normal, um, you know, one of those paper masks that you would buy in a mm -hmm. ten pack at Walmart. Yes, yes. This is this is what they call a butterfly style mask. There's there's the the three M. You notice is a round cup, and this is more of a butterfly style because it it folds literally flat like this, and then it opens up. Whereas the 3M cup stays that form, you know. So and, Brother, and also, doing God's also work, the, man. With also with this particular mask, if I have this on and I have the virus on my hands and I do this, it'll kill the virus on my hands as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And when's that going into production? We're, we're right now, we're, we've done a bunch of testing. Uh, it's been third party tested at the labs. And that's why we, we know that it does kill the 90, it's 91, I'd say 90%, but it's 91% uh, instantly on contact. So mm -hmm. it's been tested. Uh, we're, we're doing a, a few more tests that's happening uh, next week. And then we're going we're right into production. And so I will wow. probably be right at the end of the month, right at the beginning of the next month, we're going into production. Oh, that's excellent. Excellent work. Yes. That is, uh, that's Thank really you. good news for, you know, for people out there. And um, is there is there a market that you're um, angling that towards? Um, just anybody, uh, you know, like, will you be sending, um, you know, like, trial, you know, tr tr you know uh, like to, to the, um, the, the, 
homes and stuff. Hospitals and hospitals, and government. You know, um, we're right now we're working on getting uh, uh, the NIOSH approvals right now. Uh, as far as the flat masks are concerned, we don't need you don't need a NIOSH approval. But if we want to get into the hospitals, we have to get the five ten k approval, which will allow us to get into the hospitals as well. Uh, right now, where it'll be directly available for consumers, mm-hmm. you know. And then uh, um, I know we have brokers right now that are biting at the bit. They have huge quantities uh, uh, standing by uh, to purchase right now. And um, as soon as we we get it going, we'll, we'll you know we'll get it all figured out exactly where we're going to. And uh, as soon as we get our NIOSH approvals, then we could you know get it uh, also get those into the hospitals. Mm-hmm. So we're uh, we're we're working we're working really hard right now to make this all happen. Yeah, and I think you know that could also possibly um, save the movie industry. You know, tying it all back together. If people, you know, start, you know, you know, you just wear that to go to the go to the movies again. You know, because I've I've read mm-hmm. there's two or three more um, movie chains that are are just like okay, we're we're just going to give it up for the rest of the year and. You know, come back yeah. in twenty one and see if it it's it's any better. You know, it's 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 really it's a shame. It's a shame what has happened. Uh, but you know, it's the lots of, a lot of people are saying it's the new norm. You know, and um, a lot of people aren't happy with that. But you know, life is important. We all need to be safe. Uh, you know, we need to do everything to protect ourselves and what we're doing right now is we're trying to take it multi multiple steps ahead of everybody with with that's supplying normal masks by supplying a mask that will also eliminate the virus. Right. Right. Well, you know, Harry, go ahead, John. No, no, no. I was just going to say my, my hat is off to you, sir, for, you know, for, for being out there and being, thank you. Um, you know, what doing, what you're doing. Cause it, you know, we, we need some, we need some help. Absolutely. We, we surely do. We surely do. And it's on its way. Trust me, it's on its way. And what I want to say, sir, is that you are not only changing the world from your aspect of creating something to save others' lives, but you're changing the whole game on this. I mean, we've had masks. We've been washing them. We've been doing that, everything we can. And here you, sir, are taking the steps to create an existence of a mask that will not only save lives, will help doctors. And as we get this, you know, vaccine going, you are just changing up the game. And I, sir, thank you kindly for everything you're doing and saving the life, especially because it might save my life as well. Thank you, sir. You're awesome. Yeah, as soon as I get these samples in, I'll send you off some. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we appreciate your time today and, um, you know, everything that, uh, you know, you spoke to us about. I mean, and I guess it all goes back to, you know, that uh, you, sly moment. That that sly moment where you know these, you know, if it's right. in your heart, you know, you do it, and if you know if it's in your heart, it is the right thing to do. Well, I I, I gotta say, I, I do I do I have a couple minutes? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so and, and and it goes back to what Sly had said to me, right? This goes back to that. After I after Rambo, a couple years after Rambo, I think it was a couple years after Rambo, uh, I was called to audition for Karate Kid Two. So I drive. I, li- I was living in Northern California. I drive to Warner Brothers, right, and go onto the lot, and I go into Jerry Weintraub's office, you know, and, and a big time producer, right, uh, Ocean's Eleven, and tons of films. So I go into his office, and the secretary is auditioning me, and, uh, and here, right next to me, is Dustin Nguyen, who was the original Asian guy on the Twenty One Jump Street, right. So I'm like thinking to myself, oh shit, that's Dustin Nguyen. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna get this part, <laughs> you know, but. Actually, I auditioned opposite against uh, amongst them, and I did get the part. Mm-hmm. So the secretary said, "Hey, come on in. Let me introduce you to Jerry, and be packed and ready to go to Hawaii tomorrow." And I'm like, "Oh yeah!" I didn't even bring clothing with me, and she says, "Oh, don't worry about it. Just get what you need when you're in Hawaii." So I go and I meet Jerry. You know, welcome aboard. You know, and and look forward to working with you, and yada yada yada. And so I'm walking out of his office, right, and I'm on cloud nine, right. So 
as I'm walking out, I see two people coming towards me, and lo and behold, one was the martial arts choreographer, Pat Johnson, and another fellow stunt guy who I know. I didn't want to use his name because it's not a good situation. And he says to me, he sees me, he goes, hey, he goes, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, I just auditioned for Karate Kid 2, and I got the role. And he, he looks at me, he goes, oh, well, okay. No congratulations, nothing, right? <laughs> I leave, I go call home, call my family. Hey, I won't be coming home, I'm going to Hawaii, I got karate, I'm on Karate Kid 2, yada, yada, yada. And then within less than two hours later, I get a call saying, hi, this is from production, we're sorry to have to inform you that uh, the director had found somebody else in uh, Hawaii, we didn't know about it, and so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to cancel you out. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, my heart just sunk down to the pit of my gut, you know? And I'm like thinking, wait, what? This is not, this is weird, this is strange. And then I thought about the guy who I saw who said, hey, what are you doing here, you know? And, and I know the guy, you know? And I mean, I could, I could actually call him a, a friend of mine, right? But I thought, well, you know what? Because he was there in Acapulco when that whole thing went down with Stallone, right? Because I didn't finish that story because what happened was when I Sly hired me, it caused some conflict amongst some of the stunt guys because I wasn't hired by a stunt coordinator. I wasn't hired by the producer. Stallone hired me personally. Mm -hmm. So there are some people that were like not happy about that, you know? Right. So I think what the guy did was he went in and he says, hey, you don't want to hire that guy. He causes trouble, you know? He caused a bunch of trouble on Ramble 2 or blah, blah. I don't know what he said, but I'm thinking in my to myself, that's what happened, right? So I, I'm, I'm like hurt, right? And then I get upset. Then I get depressed. Then I'm like, and then I get pissed because I'm thinking I know this guy did that. So I'm pissed, right? And then I say to myself, what can I do to never, ever, ever, ever allow this to happen again? What can I do? Because I got really upset. I was depressed and hurt and mad. And so I thought, you know what? I said to myself, you know, I said, you know what? I got to be the boss. <laughs> so that's when James Hong and I produced our first movie called The Vineyard, which, be which became a cult horror classic mm -hmm. all over the world. <laughs> Yeah, so and and you can't fire the boss. Yeah, you can't fire yeah. the boss, you know. So <laughs> as as the years went on, right, I got confirmation from a buddy of mine because I ended up meeting meeting that secretary again like decades later and confirmed that I could, did get dogged on that show. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, after all those years and decades had gone by, I become an old award-winning producer, award-winning writer, award-winning director. And I thought to myself, you know what? I, I can't be mad at the guy because right. if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have changed my attitude about how I was going to proceed in my career. That was and the spark that lit the candle. Exactly. So I haven't seen the guy. I, last time I did see him, uh, which was decades ago, hug hey how are you and he was bragging about how he had just got in with the dga and and it was just like we never skipped a beat like being friends right mm -hmm. of known one another but then you know uh, the next time I, if and when i do bump into him i'm gonna give him a big hug and i'm gonna thank him and i'm gonna remind him about what happened i'm gonna tell him that i know that he did dog me but i'm gonna thank him for that right because right now, man He's he's changed my he helped he helped change the course of my my life, my career. Right. You know, had I got that part, maybe I would have just been acting. But now I'm I'm doing it all. You know. Yeah. Now, do you do you ever um, come in contact with uh, Sly? Any uh, you know any, any contact with him? Well, yeah. We when when we when he came in, I surprised him. I saw him uh, one year. And, and I knew we were going into production six months in, in advance, right? And I saw him, and I, and I said, hey, how are you? You know, big hug and all that. And, and I go, hey, I, I, I got a big surprise for you, man. And he goes, you do? And I said, yeah, yeah, but I, I can't tell you about it now, but you're going to hear about it. 
and I'll let you know about it. He goes, okay, you do that. So six months go by, he's in a recording studio recording, right? And uh, I hadn't seen him yet. I had just, I got, got in uh, uh, right when he was finishing up, right? So right when he finished up, I walked through the recording studio, just me, myself, and I walked right into where he's at because he's in the recording room by himself. And, and he sees me and he goes, hey, he goes, what are you doing here? And I said, surprise. I said, remember I told you six, I had a surprise for me? I said, I'm one of the producers on this film. He goes, really? You know, so it was a really nice reunion, you know, and, and uh, we, we sat down, we spent some time together, had a great conversation, you know, and his, um, uh, his uh, makeup artist was doing some makeup for him because he was doing, he was getting ready to do some filming for us. Uh, what do you call those when you, when, when, when the actor uh, sits and talks about the movie, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so I'm talking to him, you know, and I, and I reminded him of what he told me about, hey, do what you feel for, because what you feel, what, what you feel comes from your heart. And if anyone tells you any different, you tell them to go like that, you know, <laughs> and to go F himself. <laughs> so I reminded him about that. He goes, and he's laughing. He goes, really? He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes is that what I told you? And I said, yeah, that's what you told me. He was laughing. He goes, oh, wow. I said, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> right? <laughs> So well, anyhow, I, I just wanted to share that last story with you because, you know, it just goes to show that if you really, what, whatever you feel comes from your heart. You know, right. you go after your dreams. You don't ever let up. If you, if you get shot down, you find another way. You'll find another way. You know, just don't ever accept no for now. Exactly. Zig, instead of zagging. When you need to zig, you got to zag. Yep. So, well, thank you, uh, Harry, for uh, spending a couple of minutes with us. We appreciate everything that uh, that you are doing, um, you know, with the masks and the, and, the, and the virus. And we look forward to, uh, you know, maybe when Animal Crackers Part 2 comes out, we'll, uh, we'll catch up again. Well, we seem to have lost the uh, sound. I can't hear him. No, no sound. All right. Well, we're gonna. We'll just. We'll just. We'll, we'll, we'll give Harry <laughs> away. The arrow cracker vortex. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll do it. We'll do it. Like what was that game show they used to do? Oh yeah. Was that um. Yeah, there that's the, was that the uh, the dating game. Mm. The dating game. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Harry, for joining us. We really appreciate it, and uh, we will. We hope to get um, get to talk to you real real soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Oh boy, Jeff, that was a uh, that was an interesting one. Extraordinary. What, you, what do you say? You know. Once again, another killer episode. This dude is an extraordinary individual, and he's doing some life-changing things that's going to help everybody in the world. Well, we want to thank you for joining the Geek and I podcast this week. We are sponsored by Sumner Twins Talent. Visit them online at facebook.com slash Sumner Twins. We are part of the Geek News Now podcast network. For all your geeking news, visit geeknewsnow.net. You can read all about what's going on in Hollywood, TV, movies, comics, all right there at geeknewsnow.net. And don't forget, everything you need for your gaming experience is available for you at metallicdicegames.com. Use code GNN at checkout and save 10%. Thank you, Jeff. We will see you on, on the, the next one. We'll, we'll see Later. you on the show next time. L later. Next one. Next time. <laughs>